Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera. I'm coming to you again from Hinokicho Park in Tokyo Midtown where it's a very beautiful warm and sunny spring day. Uh, last week the news said that it's important for people to go out and try to get a little bit of sunshine each day if possible because sunshine helps your body develop vitamin D and vitamin D is uh, said to be helpful to preventing your catching a certain virus which seems to be going around recently. So. I decided today would be a good day to come out and build up my vitamin D and make a video about uh, cameras. Uh, the park is very quiet today. Uh, not so many people are out and about uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, the main lawn at the park is normally quite busy in the springtime. Uh, the Ritz Carlton Hotel, uh, located here in Midtown, uh, holds their daily uh, yoga classes here on this lawn every morning and every afternoon. And it's also a very popular place for picnics. Uh, usually uh, it's hard to find, you can't walk across this lawn or find places to step because so many people are enjoying uh, uh, the weather by having a picnic here. There are quite a few uh, restaurants and a grocery store nearby, so it's a great place to come by, pick up something to eat and lay out your blanket and enjoy a wonderful spring day. In the summertime it gets a little bit hot here, but spring is really wonderful. Uh, the rest of the park is mostly quiet. Uh, the playground area is a little bit busy because uh, people with kids you know, bring them out for a little bit of time each day. Uh, there aren't many Japanese people in the park today. Uh, most of the people here uh, today are, are Americans or Canadians. Uh, the American uh, Embassy's uh, housing compound is about a 10 minute walk from the park here. So a lot of uh, American families and kids here today enjoying the park. Uh, the Canadian Embassy is about a uh, 20 minutes walk uh, up the street over off Aoyama Dori and they don't have a separate uh, housing compound so they have to kind of make the walk here. And of course we have the uh, other uh, embassies located in the area. Uh, it's odd that I came to Japan because I, I like the country and I want to experience the uh, Japanese life and culture and then I find myself living in like the least Japanese part of Japan. But you know, I guess that's how things work out sometimes. But uh, uh, still a really beautiful day to come here to the park. Uh, the coronavirus thing is quite uh, uh, big in the news recently. Uh, we're getting around uh, 200 cases per day uh, in Tokyo. Uh, a little less uh, yesterday and today than the days before, which uh, I hope is a good sign. But uh, when you consider how close together everyone is in Tokyo and how many people commute around, uh, in a normal weekday, we get about uh, 40 million uh, train and subway uh, rides uh, in Tokyo, which is uh, an astonishing amount. A uh, national emergency was declared a couple of weeks ago, and this has uh, reduced the number of commuters down to about 25 million per day, which is still an astronomically high amount, and about five times as many as you would see in New York City on a normal day. So, uh, it's still quite busy. but. Uh, but overall, uh, life here seems to be uh, going on. Uh, you know, pretty much the only people here are people who live here or work here. We don't have any more tourists anymore. Uh, not so many flights coming in and out, so yeah, uh, quite odd days. So I'm really hoping that uh, you know, things turn around soon. And we're hoping to see some kind of return to normalcy after the middle part of May. That's when Golden Week ends and when uh, the government is tentatively planning on reopening the schools and much of the economy, but we're going to have to see where things uh, go. Uh, if cases continue to uh, increase, uh, of course, uh, it's unlikely that they'll they'll reopen uh, anything after Golden Week. But if things continue as they are and if numbers continue to trend downwards, uh, I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. But anyway. Let's go ahead and take a look at our camera for today and today we're going to be looking at a camera which I come across quite often here in Japan and a really uh, nice camera. It's the Ricoh 30, 300 excuse me, rangefinder camera. I almost said Ricoh 35 and the Ricoh 300 is actually uh, a more modern version of the earlier trigger wind Ricoh 35 cameras. It has the uh, same lens and uh, same shutter but pretty much everything else in the camera is different. Uh, the Ricoh 300 was uh, a simplified and less expensive camera which was designed to be sold in, on the main market in Japan as most Japanese in those days couldn't really afford a really nice camera. And, uh, but 
anyway, the, the Ricoh 300 is actually quite a nice camera for its price, and it, yeah. and it's uh, you know even its price range today, it, it's quite a good deal. Uh, the Ricoh 300 is a very good camera for someone who's looking for something simple and inexpensive to get uh, started into film photography. And it'll perform quite as well as much more expensive cameras. And also, you know, with the added benefit that if you drop it or break it or lose it, you're not going to be out too much money. Let's go ahead and take a look at the features and functions of the Ricoh uh, 300 starting from the top. Uh, you'll notice that the Ricoh 300 has uh, a really uh, nice shape which fits the hands well and quite easy to hold and handle. On the top left side here we have the film rewind knob which has a, a pop-out lever uh, designed uh, similar to the earlier 35 series. Like the earlier uh, Ricoh 35 it has a hot shoe for the flash uh, which makes it easier to use modern flashes which don't often come with a, a flash sync cord and uh, you can easily use a modern strobe flash on the Ricoh 300 and just follow the settings recommended on your flash when you're using a flash with one of these cameras. Next to the flash shoe we have the film counter dial. Uh, the film counter dial is rather in an odd sp space but at least where you know it, it's quite obvious and you can keep track of how many shots you have remaining in the camera. It's quite easy to use when you load your film you turn the dial until the number lines up with how many exposures are on the roll of film. So I'm shooting a 36 exposure roll of film. I'll set this to the number 36 and it's ready to go. And as you uh, wind the film and fire the shutter, it will count down. And when you get down to zero, uh, it's time to uh, replace the film. Uh, in the front here, we have a small screw next to the 300 number. And this is the access port to the vertical adjustment on the rangefinder. So if your vertical adjustment is off, you can remove this screw and directly below that screw inside you'll find the screw which adjusts the vertical adjustment. Of course here we have the shutter button and it's set up to accept a standard uh, cable release. And here we have the film winding and shutter charging lever. And we have a couple of windows here which show you the kind of film and the film speed. So you can set that to remind you what kind of film you have loaded in the camera. On the back of the camera here we have the viewfinder window and uh, this is made uh, larger than the Ricoh 35 series which makes the viewfinder uh, brighter and easier to use if you wear glasses. We have another access screw here and this allows you to access the horizontal adjustment for the rangefinder. On the bottom of the camera we have a standard quarter inch tripod socket so you can mount it to just about any tripod. And here we have the release button which allows you to rewind the film when the film is used up. Uh, the important controls are located on the lens body. Uh, at, the, at the bottom we have the uh, focusing tab and focusing dial. And this particular 300 is set up for feet. Most of them are set up for feet but some of them are metric. Uh, below the uh, scale, the moving scale on the lens, you have the depth of field scale which allows you to uh, measure the depth of field. And this lens performs the best at f8. And you'll notice, uh, if you look at these cameras, the uh, uh, depth of field for f8 is the one which is uh, in red. So uh, to get the most out of this camera, they recommend that you use the aperture of f8. But then, in my experience, most cameras seem to perform, or most lenses seem to perform best at that setting anyway. Uh, in front of the focusing dial, we have the uh, aperture ring. Uh, which uh, ranges from f2.8 to f22 and that uh, f8 is of course uh, colored in red. Uh, in front of that we have uh, uh, the m, f and x uh, indicators uh, indicating the shutters or apertures or uh, aperture and shutter speeds which are best suited to the kind of flash you're using. If you are using uh, a bulb flash which was standard when these cameras came out uh, the sync speed is 1 50th of a second. With a strobe flash, you can use just about uh, any shutter speed. The shutter speed uh, uh, range on the Ricoh 300 is a little bit limited compared to the other cameras. It's limited to 1 300th of a second, and that's where they get the, you know, the reason for calling it the Ricoh 300. Uh, the 500 series uh, featured a maximum speed of uh, 1 500th of a second, and the slowest speed would be 1 10th of a second. This isn't too big of a deal uh, uh, because you know, the, the, the slow speeds on most rangefinder cameras and old SLR cameras are not very accurate. They're, you know, uh, they're usually uh, far from accurate. I try to adjust them to get them as close as I can, but uh, compared to an electronic shutter camera uh, where the shutter speed can be uh, uh, exactly fired, 
uh, it, you know, the slower speeds are, are very hit and miss. And of course, uh, we have a bulb setting uh, for using a cable release. Uh, the standard lens in the Ricoh 300, or the only lens in the Ricoh 300, is the Riken 45mm f2.8 lens, uh, which is actually quite an excellent lens. Uh, Ricoh introduced this camera with, or this lens in their first uh, quality rangefinder camera, the Ricoh 300, and it performed well enough that uh, they, they continued using this lens for more than a decade, uh, you know, following the good advice that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So uh, a really good lens in these cameras. Uh, I sell these cameras from time to time on my Etsy and eBay stores. Uh, the only weakness, the main weakness you have to look for in these cameras is a frozen uh, focusing helicoid. Uh, these tend to freeze uh, in these cameras, uh, so you have to be careful to find one which turns easily and turns smoothly. Uh, if you do have one which, uh, which is frozen, you can access uh, the lens helicoid in the back. There's kind of a gap here. Uh, in, in, I guess, the shield which goes around the lens. And if you look, you can kind of see uh, the brass metal inside. And that is actually the uh, metal, for, you know, metal for the threads for the lens uh, helicoid. If you apply oil with a syringe to these threads and a little bit of naphtha or lighter fluid and let it uh, settle overnight, usually by the next day, uh, you can you know, let it sit overnight and with a little bit of a twist, uh, the next day you can usually get the focus to start uh, working again and focusing smoothly. Another thing to look at for these lenses is they sometimes get haze in the rear element. So uh, to check for haze, simply uh, set the shutter to B, open up the aperture, uh, and uh, hold open the shutter and look through the lens and look for the haze. Uh, sometimes the haze can be cleaned out. Uh, you can clean it out by removing the uh, rear lens element group. It comes out all in one piece and cleaning it off with a little bit of lens cleaning fluid. Uh, most times it'll clean up but sometimes it won't. Uh, otherwise the camera is quite solid and reliable and you know can give you a lot of years of use. Uh, if you're interested in purchasing this camera I have it listed in my Etsy and eBay stores uh, now. Uh, my eBay store is uh, open for business, however, uh, shipping is limited to America and Canada and the UK because those are the only places where flights are going consistently. And though I can ship to these places, there is something of a delay. Uh, the post office is telling me it takes about two weeks now because of the number of flights is limited. Uh, I can ship to other places uh, uh, on a hit and miss basis. It depends on the particular country. And the list of these countries uh, seems to uh, uh, change day by day. So if you're interested in purchasing a camera, uh, please contact me first. If you are not uh, in uh, Canada, the United States, or the UK, uh, to make sure that I can ship to your country. Uh, at the moment, shipping is scheduled to resume sometime uh, in mid-May, but then uh, there's no guarantee of that. But uh, at least for the time being, uh, you know, I can ship to America, Canada, the UK, oh, yes, and Australia, but uh, uh, it, it's a, you know, it won't be as quick as it normally uh, is. Anyway, uh, thank you very much uh, for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section below. And uh, thank you very much for watching.